so please walk us through um like how you how you how you're gonna play this tutorial mission or this first demo mission all right so um well it's gonna top line story is uh this, this is a prequel to skyrim so it's some kind of new cool canon which is awesome and um so we're just going to quickly grab a card so i'm i'm going to play uh, one player uh which means we're going to remove cards 180 181 and 182 uh from the number deck uh so this deck is kind of like a, a a living deck and um 181 and as you as you play through you're going to remove cards and then that has an impact so, so uh and as as you make decisions characters are going to get killed that will have an impact um there are going to be um uh monsters added into the event deck into the dungeons so okay so one of our next things we've got to take 160 to 164 uh and this is our starting story. I want you to imagine that the story is a bit like a kind of four-sided pyramid. And so we're about to pick one of those pyramids uh, to climb up. And depending on which one we... Um, where's... Uh, shuffle. Oh, here we go. Uh, depending on which one we pick is a different story. So... Uh, and you know they have those games. Some of those games are, um, I, I think they're called legacy games. Like this is not a legacy game, right? Like this is not something that you're permanently changing the board for future sessions. Every new playthrough, you set up clean and you start a new adventure, right? Think of it as a resettable legacy. Okay. So there is, you're not tearing up cards, but right. there are. Or putting more... stickers on the board again. No, that's right. So yeah, uh, you can come reset it and start again and try a different character. That's the beauty of it. Mm -hmm. But everything you decide has an impact on everyone around you and on and on the future gameplay even the future missions you're going to play are affected like for example there's a pile of blades here so you're you're one of the members of the blades um and uh other members of the blades because you've been basically let down by the you know the emperor and um you're betrayed and um oh, this is right before they split off Okay, yeah. So this is that's what you meant by, totally. by prequel. So this is like hundreds of years before, like you play Elder Scrolls Four. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So, um, yeah, basically, a group of blades have escaped the Great War in Citadel, finding trying to find a safe home uh, in Skyrim. And once they're there, they're trying to build a normal life, but conflict follows them. Um, so, um, also, we've got Markath is currently under the control. Uh, of, um, of King Malinak and the Reachmen. So we're just going to put a uh, token here so we can't actually go there. So that the gameplay changes like that. There's going to be stuff burned and there's going to be holds burning down, rioting that's going to affect our ability to go there. Yeah, dun do dungeons that. being clear, that kind of stuff, right? Yeah, that's right, yeah. And as, as you fulfill your quests, like if I pick, pick a certain storyline, one of your quest lines might lead you to that card number. And because I've taken it, it pushes you to the next highest card number, which has an impact on your story as well. So everything has a consequence in this game, which is really fun. Uh, so let's grab this. Here we go. Tainted Haven. So this is our kind of first uh, story. So, it's year 175 of the fourth era, the Great Wall rages across Tamriel. A group of young blades recruits go on their first mission, a patrol around the forest of Cyrodiil. A Thalmor ambush catches them off guard and they barely escape alive. Upon returning to the camp, they find it desolated. The Thalmor have been here. Cyrodiil is not safe for them anymore. They escape Skyrim far from the Thalmor's clutches. In Skyrim, the Reachmen have conquered Markarth and tensions between them and the Lords are rising. So, the card I picked is captured, you know, classic, classic Skyrim, Elder Scrolls uh, story starter. And there's various uh, versions of this. So I wake up with a terrible headache. My hands and feet are, tight, are bound to a chair. What happened last night? A man, my captor, sleeps on a straw mattress nearby. I easily break my bindings and face the sleeping guard. I dispatch him and explore the room. 
My captor's house is in a state of decay. Half of the roof collapsed a long time ago and chicken freely roam around. Inside a satchel, I find a mysterious note. Okay, so, hold on, let's uh, just tilt it a bit better. Dear Nerith, I hope you're good at finding people. This letter contains a list of names of people I need you to find and capture. I'll make it worth your while. Moivo Karnai. On the back of the letter, I find a list of names of blades, mine included. Place your player figure in Riften. So, uh, okay, let's um, pick a character, right? I think let's go for the classic Nord. And the adventure begins. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. And you can make the choices. So, will you get assistance to find Moiva Kanai, even if it's costly? Or will you seek the assistance of an information broker to find Moiva Kanai? I'm going to do, I'm trying to see, I'm trying to meta this a little bit, but probably shouldn't. I guess I'll find, I'll seek assistance in information. Okay. I'll seek this is so an information gonna... broker, yeah. 166 is our next card then. Let's just... You, get, you know, it's funny, I get a little bit of like uh, those old Choose Your Own Adventure Book vibes. If you want assistance, go to page 262. <laughs> yeah, you, you can't stick your finger in the uh, page now. Okay. Yeah, right. <laughs> so this is our first quest. Um, so you see quest number here. It's a main quest. It's in black. Um, and this is the this is um, the the amount of threat it can take before it fails, which I'll come to. We always have uh, a little number here. As it, in this case, it's a zero. So if that was a one, the game is hinting that you should probably level up before you go there and do right. it. Right. And below, you can see what you're going to have to. And, and here, little quest marker. Let's do this first. We have to put a quest marker on Winterhold. Uh, I'm going to pick blue and put blue on winter hold, just like in the video game. And there's a clue here again. If we go to winter hold, we're going to read below this line, but the game is showing it us already because it wants us to be able to prepare. We roll dice in the game, but you can mitigate the luck. If we go there, we're going to have to roll three dice. If we have the lot picking skill, we would roll an extra dice. We would be looking for di uh, sorry triangles. There is only uh, there's two triangles on each six-sided dice so one in three chance um, and if we have plant components we can roll extra dice if we don't get enough triangles so the game is telling us you can go there and risk your luck but if you want to be really certain about a cheat uh, uh, completing this go get some plants uh, or at least get uh, the lock picking skill so I forgot, uh, we just need to give ourselves, we actually do start with two plants. Um, let's bring that down because we have a health potion that needs plants. We've simplified plant. I mean, everyone knows there's a gazillion components in the game, but let, rather than, you know, if you want to play with a gazillion components, go and play the video game here. We've simplified it down into plants or and soul gems. So we have a, a potion of minor healing that if we want to use costs to because uh, you're quickly making the potion, uh, you use um, two plant components to heal yourself. So plants are really good, but they're also used in some of these tests. Uh, at the moment, we're pretty rubbish. We've got fists and ragged robes. But do you remember that <laughs> card said pick two equipment cards? So let's go get um gonna spread yay there are some useful tools in this so hide armor ha what do you fancy what's your kind of favorite build in skyrim do you want the tank with iron armor and a battle axe that's probably a good bet i mean i what ends up happening with everyone is always ends up playing stealthy characters because the animations are so fun but yeah <laughs> but yeah uh, let's the... go let's go tank let's go heavy heavy armor and why not Punch it yeah, stealth, stealth in is pretty good in this too um and uh but uh, there's no right answer which is why it's so like oh what do i want to do what do i want to do oh no that's not right hold on got that, that's that's got to be very difficult from a balancing standpoint because like the more options you give a player the harder it is to make everything kind of 
be exactly. on the same level but play different you know what i mean like it, that's got to be difficult it, it is yeah and that's obviously that's why it takes a long time to play test and test and test and you're like wait a minute this one's a bit too strong and um okay right here we go so and you'll see the character build we've got the nord so and you have a male and female version of the nord both identical just up to your, your preference the art is actually different you show the whole character here now um, the Nord has battle cry. They can lose a wound or health uh, to attack without being attacked, which is pretty good. If they learn two-handed, they'll do extra damage. If they learn smithing skill, upgrades to weapons cost less. Uh, so that's quite cool. And uh, your character board has slots, as you might expect. Helmet, armor, left and right, well, either hands or two-handed boots mm -hmm. you can carry a couple of wearables rings jewelry a couple of potions you can have room for statuses um you know at some point you might become a criminal you might become a vampire and then you've got four slots for the backpack uh and then here you have you can have one main quest and two personal quests at any time so we've got our armor uh which has you know if we want to buy armor like this it costs two gold and here's that cost in if we want to upgrade the armor uh, at the at like a smithy it's going to be two ore. if we want to enchant it it's going to be two soul gems same thing with the battle axe these are pretty cheap to um to create and if we can even craft a, uh, an iron battle axe with two ore if we want i'm going to come into the game stats when we actually get into a fight very briefly you can you've got xp you're going to gather here gold septims this, the leveling is super simple. When you get seven XP, you choose a skill and place it here. And that means your next skill is gonna cost you eight, then nine, then 10, all the way up to 14. Once you get to 14, you can still keep leveling up. What it means is you turn over a skill that you've already got to its legendary status. And that's when the game gets a bit harder as well. And you start with your basic stats here. So health, stamina, and magicka. And as you, every time you get a new skill, one of these can be pushed up a level. But as you push them up a level, good things and bad things happen. Once you go beyond this line, you're going to be able to roll extra dice uh, in um, what in what we call a push, like a kind of uh, trying to re-roll dice. Um, but as you level up, you're going to be discarding lower level monsters, so the, the dungeons get tougher. Right, so you're not just easily killing. Like, like exactly. the, how the world evolves around you as you level up, same thing here. So you're not just like, yeah. you know, going farming stuff indefinitely to get level up. Yeah, that's right. So the, the game is going to scale with you. So you can't just keep farming the crappy, like, little wolves and, and uh, mud crabs. Uh, right. And I think uh, we are ready to go with our first round. We've got our gear, got our um, plant components. Um, turn starts. So this is how a turn starts. We've got an event deck here. So let's shuffle this and we're going to start our first turn. A call to arms. <coughs> right. The companions are looking for new members to join their ranks. Can you prove yourself worthy? So. Hey, we're a warrior build. That's perfect for us. It is. It is. Yeah. So look, three dice. And then if we learn one-handed, two-handed, or archer, you can get an extra dice. We only need two, I call these circles. Um, and there's three circles on each dice. This is really easy. So we would be able to upgrade an item for free, and we gain a card, one, four, three. This is one of the ways in which the game evolves the event deck, is that it's certain quests like this will bring in good cards or bad cards. And we want to bring in good cards. Um, if we fail at this, we're going to degrade white run uh and uh so the shops will shut and it'll be hard to shop there or it will start rioting um so we've got to be careful but the first thing we have to do is take two threats and we're going to put this in this is what's called a world quest so we can have up to four world quests anyone can do world quests um around the table uh only i can do my my uh main quest here so we have to take two threats from this symbol so I'm going to grab the threat up here. Threat is kind of like a timer for the game. Think of it as a gentle reminder from the game. Um, 
There's a bit of pressure. Now, this is where we come to threat. What do you do with threat? I could put both of these threat on this card, but it can only take four. So when it takes its fourth threat, I fail this quest. And if we fail a main quest in the first mission, uh, you have to restart. Uh, most quests, if you fail, uh, there's a fail condition um, and you um, you just keep playing though. It's very much a kind of fail forward start. But, yeah, but just for the sake of like the first turn, if you fail it, you have to kind of start over. Like you have to, yeah. for the sake of the uh, moving like, the longevity of the game and how the pacing yeah. works. <laughs> exactly. But, um, you know, I'm going to be pretty ruthless. Um, we have other places we can put this. So here's all the towns up here. So each town, this gives you a handy guide of, of what markets you can buy from. So Solitude, you can buy from the Might, st um, Stamina uh, stamina and um, Magicka deck. But if you sell things, they they uh, you get one more Septim for them there. Whereas in Markath, uh, you can only buy from the, the Might deck, which is kind of, you know, imagine that's probably heavy weapons, heavy armor and or only costs four they, everything costs five normally there so you can't um uh, other other plant plants and soul gems would cost five each here in Morthal, you can't even buy soul gems so it gives you an idea of the sort of different you know each town is a bit different and i can put threat onto them so i don't plan on coming back to rifton so <laughs> i'm gonna leave it uh probably caused a fight in the um in the tavern as i left um so um it's unstable which means you now can't shop there uh and you know um so oh, i see so it's like re it's a resource management system that you and your team have to decide how yeah. you get how you spread this out and how you end up going to play okay exactly and if i put a second one on it would now cost five septums to bribe the guards to let you in because they've closed it. If I put a third one on, it's going to generate a threat every turn, which is very bad. So we definitely don't want to do that. I'm I'm just going to put one over here on. Oh, screw it, Dawnstar. Why not? Yeah, and you can pay five septims to remove these when you get a bit of flush later on, because you can become the savior and go around helping. Like a like a bounty too. It's like pay off your bounty or pay off your fines. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right uh right so we've dealt with the threat because i didn't want to put any on my on my card just yet uh so we want to he head up to winter hold but wouldn't be a bad thing to maybe try and get some more um resort some more uh, leaves on the way up and so you can see we're down here and we can we move along these little roads and we can move four spaces a turn unless we get a horse which gives us an extra movement so i'm gonna hmm where do we want to go i want to get up i think i'm going to stop off at this wilderness space so this is one two three four so the different spaces <coughs> excuse me are um you know you've got different types of dungeons so this is a cave uh you've got um uh, like dwemer dwemer cities are like the worst caves are the easiest and then you've got the um, uh, the tombs and uh, ruins and uh, mines. So mines are like would be the next level up. But I'm going to avoid that for now because I'm just going to go and do uh, get get a um, personal quest. So you can get personal quests um, in towns and wilderness spaces. So let's do that. So we've done our movement, and now we'll do. A wilderness card so things only activate if you stop on them right it's like if you go over them nothing happens but if you enter That's right. space okay yeah so let's see what we got Ooh. right the cold weather literally makes me sick i miss the marshes so gain a component of your choice now this has a test on it with a reward. So I'm going to see what the push is. The push is, uh, is also with plants. So I'm going to take a plant component as my... So this is this is how you quickly get components. Um, I don't have to do the test, but I'm going to try it. I will need to roll three dice. I don't have alchemy. I need two triangles. 
than I could push with plants. My success would be to gain 3 XP, so it's well worth it. Where's the dice? Here we go. And definitely the dice gods are not with me today. Oh no. So I've got three plant components, so I could risk re-rolling them, but the triangles are only one in three, and I don't really want to use them up um, like that. So I've failed the test, but that's fine. I can still take the quest. So do I want to help the sick wizard and follow this this story or just like interact with him and get the, the component? Um, yeah, I will. If I don't, that goes back into the shuffle. So if I do, this card is removed forever from the game. So 104, so this would go in the box. Um, so I now have a personal quest. So these are like a brown color. And these are unique um, to your to your character, right? You have the yes, other characters right. don't yeah. get the rewards or anything. It's all you. Yeah. Now sometimes they're a fight, and other people can come and help me. So I need to put a quest marker on Falkreath. Let's grab that. And Falkreath is down here, other side of the world. So let's have a look. I'm going to need soul gems. Relatively easy. Um, so it's a kind of uh, magic based um quest this one could take four so another benefit of getting distracted and doing lots of personal quests is you can have more personal quests that can take more of that threat as it generates you can spread it around easier so this is where the game is encouraging you to get distracted to absorb the threat and when you complete a quest all the threat on the card goes away so it's a great kind of sponge for it uh, i just tend to let towns burn you know who cares <laughs> right so okay so we've got we've got the quest card's gone away end of the turn next turn now because i'm playing uh i'm just going to grab this um first player marker oh no where is it oh yeah here we go when we play solo um uh we use the uh, the first player token put it on your card now i'm taking it off the card on an off turn we don't draw an event just to take the pressure off the player a little bit so uh go as well. right so where am i i'm now here so i'm gonna move one two three up to so, winter so is that round over then that first turn is that done yeah it was move do something or stay where you are and do something right as simple as that and and actually if there was several of us playing we all move and then in turn order we go round and do stuff so and it could be that you went to the city and you're like you want to get a lot i'm just going to buy and sell some stuff so you guys get on with it we all just do our thing at the same time which really saves gameplay time um if we if a group of us have gone to a dungeon the person who is in first in turn order triggers the dungeon and then we all uh jump over i mean uh, and start running the dungeon as a, as a little mini game, which we will do in a minute. Okay, right, let's go and do this quest. So I've moved up there, and there's various things I can do in the town. I could buy and sell items, but I've got nothing to buy or sell. I could uh, I could buy more components. I've got no money. I can enchant an upgrade, but I've got no components. Um, so we'll we'll come to that. So let's have a look at this quest. The place is empty. A neighbor tells me he left in a rush a few weeks back. Inside, I realize he barely had time to gather his belongings. I look around for clues. Open a strange looking chest. Right, three dice. We need one triangle. Okay. As we know, that's not necessarily that easy. Oh yeah, and I've got another one. Let's just bring this extra component down. This is gonna be useful. Can we get a triangle? Yes! Barely. <laughs> that was lucky. Right, so we turn the card over. Okay, success. I open the trap chest without any problem. Gain five gold and two XP. Now, 
Um, typically, if you yeah, so if you fail, you see you open the chest, but it destroys its contents. But then you keep reading. So this is how the game usually rewards failing forward. That fine, yes, you fail, but the story keeps going. You you know, this isn't a game where it's like tough. You know, go back to the beginning. Even yeah, reset. Let's do a hard reset. We messed up. Yeah, which is annoying. You know, it's just like yeah, but I've got. I really like the character build I've got. No, that's it. You know, but this one lets you keep going. Yeah, it's a bit harder, but it's fine. Some <laughs> now, some of these failures. Um, Ah, and this is one. This means a blade dies. Because of your failure, somewhere in Skyrim, a blade just got killed another, you know, as part of this plot. And you would take one of these cards uh, in this deck, there's 10 of them, and discard it, not looking at who it is. They're all really, really good cards that are very helpful to you that will eventually come out in the game. And as you as they die, you're limiting your future Help. So are, are they kind of like companions like a little bit like kind that? of yeah and other really good events and stuff like that you know stuff where some of your fellow blades would really help you in the battles ahead so you're like no <laughs> so uh, it's quite fun <laughs> right in a hidden compartment oh, let's just grab this money first i don't want to forget the money uh so we can have that on a five side and then two xp so we're heading towards leveling up. Right, in a hidden compartment behind the bed, I find a note signed by Karelian the Hunter, addressed to any blades who find it. Someone was on his trail and he escaped. The note also mentions Moiva's recent activities. He points at Moiva Karnai and her hideout in an abandoned cave in Hafinger. So will you storm the hideout by yourself or hire some mercenaries? I don't know how much do the mercenaries cost. It's it's narrative though. So oh, it's narrative. Like yeah. I mean, yeah. we're a warrior. I think we got this. Yeah, exactly. You want vengeance, right? Yeah. Uh, one seven three. So we're going to take this card. Um, one seven three. The actual box has got you know the big Skyrim stone relief has got yeah. this big card box with the relief wrapped around it. It looks really beautiful uh, that you store all your cards in with little dividers for every hundred cards. Okay, Bandit Heist. We're going to put a marker on a cave in Hafinger. Uh, there we go. Cave in Hafinger. Again, the other side of the country, of course. Um... This is saying that we should be level one by the time we get there. And we're going to have to clear two human enemies. So this would be a quest that someone else could help you on and vice versa with other friends. Right. Quests. So uh, we know that that's a fight coming up. So we want to tool up a bit for that. Um, and uh, there's nothing else we can do in the town. So that's the end of the turn. I'm going to put this back on. So next turn, we're drawing... An event card. I'm going to go and do a dungeon this time. Treasure Hunter. Riches beyond belief are hidden in ancient chambers. Can you get them without waking the undead menace? Um, Probably not because we're wearing heavy armor and we're warriors, so... Yeah, I know, yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, so, two more threat, and we need to... Oh, actually, we need to put this. There's a quest marker in White Run and in a tomb in the Pale. So we use the grey ones. This is like anyone... Uh, yeah, here we go. So they're actually quite close together. I'm actually thinking we should go and do this one and uh, upgrade our weapon. It'd be pretty cool. So let's go and do a cave on the way down there. Oh, wait, and we have to do the threat. Remember? Two threats. We have to spread threat around again, yeah. Yeah, so we'll give the, the holds a break this time since we've got some quests. So this time, I'm actually going to put one on each. Now, of course, if there was multiple players, I'd be like, hey, give me one, I'll take one, and someone else might take one. So it's you can spread them around, each of you. Teamwork, you, yeah. You, know, you can imagine with, like, say, four players, uh, and you only have one event card per round, so no matter how many players, you can start to absorb a lot more threat. But then there's, you know, other stuff is happening too. So, right. Um... 
let's go do a dungeon and show you how that works so i think we're going to go one two three four to this cave here now there's no difference between caves but a lot of quests as you just saw this one is in this cave a cave in Hafinger. there's only one cave in Hafinger, so that's how the quests are located around it will say a tomb in east march or uh, a uh, Dwemer city in the rift <coughs> um yeah, oh, I see cool. they're segmented. I see the segmented lines to the blue, the yellow, the purple to show you oh, the, yeah. the, the area. Yeah. So yeah, those are the halt the, the holds. And actually you can use fast travel in this. So if you're in a city, let's say if you're in Riften and you want to get really fast to Winterhold, you would pay one septin for every barrier you have to cross. So that's one, two. So you can pay two gold and you turn up in Winterhold on the cart. So um, we got it all. Right, we're in the dungeon. So let's see how that works. Um, we're going to draw. Think of dungeons. We've had abstract, of course, but it's, you know, wouldn't it be cool to have a dungeon crawl next to a, 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 another board like that? But the game would take forever. So we've tried to abstract it into a really fun little kind of mini game. Um, kind of, I always think of uh, Skyrim dungeons are very much like you do this room and then you kind of move on and then there's another kind of room so think of these as areas of the dungeon or rooms or encounters yeah yeah and we've got to do one at a time so let's turn this one over it's a mud crab so we're going to need he's got uh red armor He's got two red armor. So this is the kind of health track, but also right. armor track for the creature. He's an animal. Um, if we could, um, if we had the sneak ability, which we don't because we're in heavy armor, but if we were like a Khajiit with um, the sneak ability, then we can try and sneak him. Which means we can try and kill him before he gets to attack. Monsters always attack first. So uh, let's see what he does. He rolls the monster dice. lightning bolt so we check the results he didn't get anything so he missed um so, so they have yeah. a specific uh symbol they have to roll in order to hit anything else is basically a miss yeah so he needs the the skull and the axe to it to hit us uh so we're gonna attack right now this is where we make a choice we can do a swing that will do t either two red is heavy damage or two yellow light damage it only, to, to be successful, we're going to need two circles. They're the easiest to get, and it's going to cost one stamina. So I'm going to spend a stamina, and we're going to try that. So as you can see, we could try and chop for four red damage, which is heavier, but there's there's only one diamond on the dice. So that's actually quite hard. Um, if we get the two-handed skill... This means we can roll an extra dice, so we would be rolling more dice. Yeah, improving your statistics. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, we're rolling... For your odds, yeah. Yeah, so you, you always roll three dice to start with. And we're looking for two circles. Ugh. But, okay, not too is bad. The, is the, di the diamond's not a wild, I'm guessing, even though there's one of it? No, that's right. Yeah, it's you need this a specific result, but we can push, push at, at this stage up until this level. We can push with two dice or well, up to two dice, but they cost stamina. So I'm going to spend one stamina and roll an extra uh, and roll another dice. Yes, we did result. it. <laughs> we did. So it costs a bit more stamina to put a bit more effort into it now. This is how damage works. I can do two red or two yellow damage. He's got two, he's got two heavy armor. Our, a color absorbs a color. So if I did two red damage to two red armor, it absorbs it. But you always do at least one point of damage. So I'd only do one point. If I instead do two yellow damage, Red doesn't absorb yellow. 
So it bypasses that and does damage, the, the actual damage, like the full damage. So oh, interesting. Okay. I kill him. Think about it as the the slim blade slips past the heavy armor. Right. So, um, uh, in, in we want to do yellow way, damage in that case because that will kill him. Yeah. So the yellow damage goes straight through and does full damage. Where it let, if he had four red, let's just say he had four red. And I did two yellow, it would reduce it by two. If I did two red damage and he had four armor, it would only reduce it by one because it's absorbing those heavy blows. Right. The four counts as one and then the three counts as one. Yeah. So you always do one point of damage, no matter how how good their armor is, if you get if you get a success. But um, you always want to do a different color of damage so I, I could also be doing magical damage a magical damage would bypass red or yellow so but some creatures will have all three armors so you've got to work together and someone will say well look i'll attack him first because i can wipe out his red armor and then that means when you do red damage it's going to go straight through so there's a bit of strategy in how you defeat creatures but we killed him so he's going to go into the discard uh, and if if we were level one, we would discard him now, and we get one XP. Just gonna bring this over here as a reminder. And the end of the room, we reset our stamina. But if we'd taken any wounds, we don't reset that until the end of the dungeon, which is right. why. So Magicka and, and Stamina regen after each combat, but health is not until the end of the yeah. entire encounter. Yeah, and that's why you use your plant. You know, at any time I can spend two plants to heal one point. Right. The potion of healing. Right, okay. Uh, and just also as a... Well, let's see with the next Let's Creature. I'll show you how, how we might get hurt. So let's flip him over. A Skeever. So he's got three yellow damage so um he attacks first flame oh he missed he misses again yeah i'll tell you what i'm gonna do let's fix it he hit <laughs> he hit us for one red damage i'll just show you how that works this is this is easy right so uh, then we have a look at our armor. Now we've got three red armor. Do you remember what I said about armor color absorbs? Yeah. So color? now you'll be down to two red armor for this encounter, ah. right? No, no, that's right. So, uh, sorry, no, that's not right. So I've got three red armor. Now what that means is I absorb that damage. It doesn't go through. So what it happens instead is I take a point of stamina. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you you suffer something if they hit. So it's not yeah. just a wash. Now, if I if that had been four red damage, take three off, I would have taken one point of wound instead. And if that was two, or if that was one yellow damage, I don't protect against yellow. I don't I haven't got any. Think of it as light armor. Think of it as like I'm wearing heavy armor, but like I'm wearing my pants underneath. Right. So, right. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't, I didn't buy a leather jerkin to go underneath to protect me against those like little dagger stabs. So, um, you know, you need to kind of get extra armor to, you know, you can get armor that will give you yellow. You can upgrade your armor to give you yellow because you've added a really heavy leather under underneath to it. Is so, there like um, a is there a mechanic to stop you from like pulling like level five monsters in a dungeon when you're this low, or is like there's a certain order you, you put the monster deck? The, the, yeah, the way the monster deck is built is it goes in number order from level zero monsters, ones, twos, threes, four, five, six, seven. Uh, okay, six, seven. downward. Okay, as you level up, yeah. you pull. Yeah, and you discard yeah. other decks, like you said before. Okay. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, right. Okay, so let's let's hit him back. So we've got to do yellow. Well, we want to do red damage. We don't want to do yellow damage. Um, so let's go hit him. Um so we're gonna do now we could risk this chop and kill him in one go but it's pretty risky because it's a one in six so i'm gonna go safe and uh try and hit him with the swing okay because we could do two red instead of or two yellow so we would obviously choose the two red so spend some stamina and let's roll the dice 
What? <laughs> I'm not even going to bother to push. We did it. <laughs> That's crazy. That's crazy. All right, so then it's back to him. He has a swipe at us. Oh, and he does hit. Another one uh, red. So again, I, the armor does absorb it, but it wins me. So back to me. I'm going to spend a stamina to hit again. Come on, two two circles. That's all I'm asking for. Seriously? <laughs> <laughs> all right. Oops. Okay. Well, he misses. So. So now you're that. out of stamina. What happens now? Ah, got one left. For now. You count zero as a space. Okay, I see. I can. It's one yeah. of those games. Yeah, that's right. Oh, finally, right. So we did two red, which Bert goes straight through. So he's down to one. And then... Oh, he's hit me for one red again. So what happens? Uh, I can't take more stamina. So now my health... So now you start hitting the health. Okay, I see how this works now. So what I'm going to do on my turn is rest. So if I rest, I get two stamina back so it's back to his turn oh so you skip your turn it's kind of like you're eating 31 raw potatoes yeah pausing basically. the game yeah oh but he's hurt me again but i get to absorb i've got stamina to absorb it right now. uh and now i'm gonna whop him so use up that uh let's do it we can do it we can do it Yes. Yes. Two red damage. He's dead. I get another XP. And uh, and then the way the dungeon deck. Now, it's not quite as easy as you think. Is we take the top card, which is a bear. He's even tougher, as you can see. And then um, we're going to shuffle those and put it back on so whilst it the game is scaling but it's also getting a little bit harder right so you can't just keep mining the the, the little dungeons the to... mud yeah the mud crabs and the thing yeah the game like you said the game of, uh, levels there up might be you. something you know there might be a bear in there now if we come back so you've got to be a bit careful uh, and then, and we've got dungeons for each, you know. So you've got, uh, sorry, these are all types. So you human, you've got humans, um, undead, Daedra, and Dwemer. So it's all. I mean, let's. I'll just give you a quick, give you a quick view. So you've got dwarven ballista trap. Look at that. Oh wow, that's a lot of light damage. Okay. Yeah, five light damage, and uh, it hits on everything except a blank, and then a um, dwarven spider. Uh, that's doing all sorts of stuff, and it's got look three different colors of armor. But you start to get good rewards, getting look four XP. For, yeah, you get uh, things when you kill them other than just XP. Everyone in everyone in the dungeon gets the XP, whether you killed it or not. So it really the game is encouraging you to go and help each other do dungeons. Don't don't just stride off on your own, which you can do, but like it's much better. You're going to all share loads more experience. Uh, okay, so also by finishing a dungeon, you get treasure, which is always the best bit. Um, and does everyone get treasure or just you? No, so whoever killed the last creature. Whoever kills the beast, okay. But, you know, the you, you should always think, like, who needs this treasure? But of course... So you can't, you can't openly trade, like, with other players yeah. at any given time? Yeah. Okay. Totally, yeah. All right. Uh, like you said this is a cooperative game so like the hoarding everything yeah. yourself is not but the i've idea totally situation. seen people go uh dude sorry i need to sell this so, uh, so yeah. look, <laughs> i kind of can't i can't uh this is a wearable right so it's going to go there i can't really use jester's gloves because unless i start becoming a sneak build so i'm probably going to sell that it's worth three gold somewhere and you have to be for the selling you have to be in a city to do that yeah, that's right. And of course, if we had a Khajiit, I'd be like, look, you take it. It's fine. You need it more than me. And because you want everyone else to be better at what they're doing because it helps you in dungeons. Right? Yeah, yeah. Qu like, again, the co this, the concept of cooperative board game is lost on some players. <laughs> yeah, 
<laughs> no. Oh, and I've seen plenty of people not be cooperative. It's quite hilarious. But you play um, how you want to play. Yeah, that's the beauty yeah, exactly. of the game. Yeah. Right. Okay. So that's that was the end of the turn. We did a dungeon. Um, now we're on an off turn, so we're not going to draw an event card. And uh, let's move. One, two, three. We're going to white run, and we're going to do this quest in white run. So three dice. We don't have any of the, the martial skills yet, but we only need two circles. But going on my luck, that might not be as easy as I think. So, hold on, let's just put these away. Um... Seriously, come on. Um... The odds are in your favor. How are you keep rolling the, the pyramids every time? I'm going to... I'm gonna try one because it's a it's a 50 50 chance no okay i'm not gonna risk the others so failed this quest <laughs> so we're gonna degrade white run sucks uh so that card is gone for good and we add a threat to white run Damn, so we can't buy or sell here. Not that I... Oh, I, of course, I was about to buy the... I should have... So I could have sold the Jester's Gloves before I did that, but... So there is a turn order in terms of, like, how you do things like sell or trade and then... Any you order you want. It's like, okay, I'm going to do my quest or I, I want to buy, sell. Because sometimes you might want to sell some stuff to get some money to buy some components enough to go and... i, I tell you what we're going to do is um, let's pretend... White run isn't degraded. Just so I can show you some some stuff, some cool stuff. Uh, we're going to take a bunch of um, soul gems and ore. We, we'll we'll pretend that we've picked these up on by killing a few creatures. Just so I can. I got show some you. rewards for killing some stuff. Yeah, I'll show you how. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me, upgrading and enchanting. So having having run around, uh, definitely not cheating, and uh, gained some ore and uh soul gems uh we've got for enough. the sake of the demo we'll call it yeah 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 we've got enough to upgrade so whilst i'm in town i'm gonna visit the first of all the smith and um we're gonna upgrade i think let's let's think aggressive mode i'm gonna upgrade the um battle axe and let's see what do we get now if i had learned smithing uh, this would cost uh, less. It would only cost one four. So uh, at the moment, I'm spending. There we go. Two left. Um, and also, if you learn the smithing skill, you can draw uh, three cards and pick the one you like best, which gives you more control because you know what you want from the smith. At the moment, I'm just turning over and going, hey, look, I've got this crappy old battle axe. What can you do with it? And he's like, uh, I can... <laughs> Here we go. This is what he can do with it. He can... Oops. So add one dice, basically, to it, right? Yeah, let me just do this up here so you can see. Oh, no, it's the wrong one. Let's get rid of the fists. Yeah. So basically, it's now doing five. Uh, the in a real table world, this would be a lot easier. But yeah, is that right? Oh no, it's the top one. Yeah. So now we can do three red damage or three yellow damage. So that's pretty good. He's sharpened the blade. So that was actually worth it. Um, but then we're gonna. And then I think we'll visit the. Well, we'll ask him to see what he can do with our iron armor that costs two. Uh, what's the right? Okay, so that's pretty good. Um, uh, except with the magnetic clipping, it's a bit annoying. So, as you can see. This now has an, a point of yellow armor. So this now blocks three red, one yellow. 
Oh, so I see. So there, so each one of the sections of the cards is like whether it's in weapon or uh, armor or yeah. Yeah, okay, I, I see it now. Okay, interesting. So we've designed it so it's like one card does lots. But then we don't have like four different piles for armor and yeah. one pile for weapon damage and another pile for magic damage. Yeah, yeah. So let's enchant um, as well. I'm going to enchant the battle axe. Uh, so again, if you can. Oh, absorb health is so good. It's so good. That's good for that weapon, yeah. The absorb health. After every encounter, we get one health back. That's amazing. So that's really good. And then let's do it with the... We'll pretend we had another one. Uh, we'll enchant the... And the enchantment's pretty much... Whereas it, upgrades are unique to weapons or armor, the um, enchantments are just kind of the... You know, they're the same for whatever the item and you, is. And you mentioned the player can do this on his own time if he's in there. So you're not taking yeah, a yeah. whole turn doing stuff, yeah? Yeah, you you guys don't need to be sitting around waiting. I can be just like fiddling around. Okay, I'm going to spend some more. Like, just get on and do it whilst you three are doing a dungeon. So here we go. Deal the final blow in encounter and gain a soul gem. I could never get soul traps to work in Skyrim. God, I sucked. <laughs> The key is to enchant your weapon so you just have a, sh a ton of charges and it just absorbs it. Yeah. And then, then, yeah, then you just have to worry about having soul gems. Yeah, yeah. So there you go. That's that's how the enchant... Really simple. And of course, if I'd, you know, if I'd got the smithing skill, um, you know, you'd be picking a couple and going, oh, look, gain one stamina when receiving any red damage, like, mm, which is better. And that's the fun part of the choice how you want to kind of affect your build. And um, the only thing is when you sell this weapon, you lose all this, all these upgrades. Right. So it can't be dechanted. So I, you know, it's kind of, if I, I probably wouldn't bother enchanting or upgrading the basic gear. I'm hoping to find a better weapon in the dungeons um, or come across something through a quest um, and then spend money upgrading it. But then they cost more to upgrade. There might be like three or four soul gems each. So again, the choice is, do you kind of do a bit of upgrading to help you get there quicker or kind of just hold out right. until, until you've got what you need? Uh, but this is a pretty cool, cool build. Uh, the other thing to show you is, let's say we've, we've got enough for my first skill. So then the choice would be, uh, probably I want to be rolling more dice with that battle axe. So we can have a look up at the skills here. Uh, so look, we've got all kinds of magic skills. So typically smithing uh, gives you an extra dice in smithing tests and you get to draw two dice for upgrades. Heavy armor gives you an extra dice in heavy armor tests and you can take one more point of red armor damage. Block, if you're holding a shield, you gain yellow and red uh, extra, uh, extra armor. Two-handed, one-handed gives you or archery gives you an extra dice with any of those weapons then you've also got light armor gives you an extra dice for again skill tests gives you sneak uh, sneak skill gives you sneak so it's a great way to if you're a khajiit or you just want to go as a sneak build character this is a great way to build up your sneak and every one of those is a dice so for every level of sneak you've got you've got an extra dice to defeat the uh the, the um the sneak uh, ability on a creature, which I'll just show you. Uh, no, that's lock picking. There we go. A vampire fledgling. To sneak it and hit it first, you've got to get three successes. So you need a good sneak skill. Um, lock pick. We have traps in the game, so um, if someone's got lock picking as a skill or a lock pick, they can try and stop the trap. Imagine this one. That's going to give everyone three red damage if you oh, fail. Oh, everybody. Oh, geez. Okay, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it's only got one wound, like one red armor. So someone can smack it quickly and get rid of it. Yeah, tough. That's tough. So I'm going to grab this two-handed skill. Uh, uh, so let's say we'd leveled up, and I'd probably... I reckon bump my stamina up because I'm using it all the time uh, so that I can take a bit more. Now I'm I'm still only um, 
I'm at level zero. So what I'm now going to do is discard any level zero creatures like that mud crab and the skeever. And you have to and you have to pull a level one, right? That's how that works. The next stage up. Well, what it means is when you just you'll still fight them. um, But once you've killed them, you discard them. So, oh, so you never fight them again. Okay, right, right. Yeah, so in in, in the animal deck, you there's only going to be level ones and above creatures. But also anyone else that has to fight animal creatures, they've also got to fight level ones and above. So, it's, you know, like in Zombie Side, like when someone levels up, it kind of pushes it up the, the danger level for everyone. So yeah, that's why everyone's like, don't don't kill that. Don't kill that. Like, yeah, yeah I know. together as a team, yeah, to not yeah, scale yeah. up the, the encounters. Of, you want to kind of really help everyone level up at the same time. So that's right. Again, real kind of incentive. Let's all go on the dungeon together. Come on, I'll help you with your thing. Can you come and help me with mine? So, you, you know, some real strategizing. Not like, it's not really like pandemic, but in a sense, you're like, look, I've got to do this thing over here, but there's this quest here. If we don't do that, it's going to be really bad. And then, look, could you come here? Why don't we do this dungeon on the way over here? And then we'll do this, this quest. So there's a kind of, oh, wait a minute, but I really need to go over here, you know. So there's a lot of that kind of strategizing together, like what's the best way around the map to kind of, you know, it's it's kind of like a big puzzle to solve in a sense. Does everybody have to land on the dungeon square to participate or does this one player have to land on it to? Uh, no, so like I said, in the, let's just say we've got, uh, you know, we're all... Um, we're all kind of moving around. So on a turn, let's say it's my turn. I go, hey guys, let's go do this cave. So everyone's like, all right, okay, I'll join you. Um, and then this dude's like, no, 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 I, I need to go to White Run and do my quest. Uh, so um, it's I, I'm first player, so I go, okay, let's start the dungeon. So then the two of us are now in the dungeon together. Okay, so that's really um, the same spot for the dungeon. Yeah, you do. Yeah, and uh, and and the way it works with two people is uh, we say, well, who who's going to go first? So, um, you know, let's say we're up against these two. So before you turn the card, I go, okay, I'll go first. I'm the tank. I'll try and take him out. Or if you've got a, a sneak character, they might be like, let me go first because I want to try and sneak, you know. So Bandit Berserker. So there you go. And then uh, the first person has a crack and then the next person fights them. But the, the, bad, the, the encounter fights back against every enemy player. Okay. So I'll he'll roll to attack me. I try and hurt him. Then he's going to roll to attack you, and then you try and hurt him, and so on. But not the person who's in town, though, because he's not there, right? Or oh or... yeah, that's right. He's just like ha ha. Yeah, he's like, oh, cool. you guys have fun with that encounter. Now, can he yeah, move to the dungeon and like and like help? Like after no, he's he done? can't. No, because you're he's kind of doing his thing, and you're you know because you know I guess abstractly like this is all happening so quickly and. Um, you're running around and but now if you die oh let's let's talk about dying so what happens if you take too much damage so if you're here or here and you take three damage you don't you stop at this point this is called the final wound uh this little skull uh hold so on one second sorry there? my cat is it's okay <laughs> It's all right. So you said talk so, about final wind. Uh, final wound. So if you took three damage, you, you can't take more than two damage at this point. So you st always stop at this point. It's called final wound. It's like it's one last chance. Are you sure you want to stay in this dungeon? So what that means is, OK, it's back to me now. Um, if I go beyond this point, I'm going to die. Uh, or it gives me one last chance to try and uh, maybe I've got something I can heal or maybe I can change my weapon and kill the creature like one. It's like a risk. It's like push. Do you want to really push your luck? Now, if you do die, if you go down behind that point, then it's not quite as bad as you think. You just you just respawn. Um, I think you respawn in, in uh, the nearest town um, and you you don't lose anything. You don't lose any points. You respawn with full health. But you take one threat for every player and you immediately draw an event card, which then probably gives you threat and might be good or bad. Do you see what I mean? Yeah, yeah, I see. It's a, it's, so it's it, way so if you're not playing the, the long RPG, you're not permanently out <laughs> and you don't just yeah, walk exactly. away. Yeah. So it, it, it doesn't suck. It's just kind of bad news. It's making life harder for everyone. So there's nothing worse than like, oh no, I lost all my cool gear or whatever. 
it's just no no it's like you you, you just respawn but um you know dark threats cloud. added yeah you're behind we're not with your team anymore and the threat is added yeah. throughout the world yeah. map yeah. yeah yeah so that's pretty straightforward and then as soon as you heal back and also if you were there and i'm like okay i'm going to use my healing spend those two to go back up one point i now can't go back past that point again so you've just got like again i've got another chance and then i and then i'll die so it's quite a good little way of just kind of gripping the player before they fall over the edge right um what else haven't i showed you that's basically it really and then you know we just keep going like i've got um you know i've got my other quests down here and over here i can um, pick up another quest in the um you know in, in a town or a wilderness space so you always want to have like you know two or three quests going because it means you can absorb more threats you've got more interesting stuff going on you've got more places to go around the map you've got more stories and because um there's not many in the deck in this uh um, online version but there are uh, dozens of um wilderness and town quests and so depending on what you pick up from the deck um you're going to see a different um story and some of these these quests go on and on over multiple cards. They might be two th or three uh, cards deep in terms of, you know, the um, uh, the, the storyline. So and and they branch. So depending on the choices you make at, at the end of each one, they're going to be a bit different. Let's just like flip this one over and see. Um, so this one, again, with a success, you would gain three XP with a failure. Uh, you gain a threat and 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 you remove this card but if you succeeded you get to draw card 105 which would be um something fun I should how do say. you how do you win the game so you win the game uh in this one you're trying to find out what's what who's this more of so you need to finish your main quests so in this case i need to go to i know i need to finish the black cards these ones are just side quests. They're fun, and I can keep doing them, but they don't finish the game. But if I if I proceed with this, if I if I if I'm like, look, I don't want to get distracted. I just want a quick game. You just keep following the black cards. So we would go, and let's just we can, you know, um, I think in the first mission there's about three. You play through three of these, and then you get to the finale uh, where you discover what's who move move is why are the blades being targeted and then um the the mission's going to end and uh you've all found you know you've all found the evidence um you get a reward and then it's like right carry on to chapter two so the game has got two whole campaigns each has got three chapters so the first chapter is really if we push 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 we could probably do it in 45 minutes with a cut with me or, or or two people maybe an hour with four people um but of course you get distracted but you could finish it in about you know 45 minutes to an hour if you really yeah you, you mentioned like the main quests have like those like recommended level ones and how the enemies get stronger so you don't want to rush right into the doing the main quest you'll maybe underpowered and underprepared i mean we i've repeatedly played this for four to five hours because we just kept getting distracted and having fun <laughs> play and that's me on my own and uh, my gaming group, four people, we played for five hours and, you know, we just, you know, at the end it was just like, okay, well, let's, let's just finish now so that we've done it in this, in this, in, on the day, but we could have get going, uh, doing some more dungeons and stuff. Everyone kind of, you, you get into that sort of like, oh, I just need a bit more XP. I want to get another skill. Come on, come on. And I want to get another cool treasure. And then, and then so like, and then you have, it supports up to several players. Is that what you said? It's one up to, to four players. Now to to four. you have free roam mode because of the five to eight player expansion. So free roam is where you basically don't use the main narrative quests. You just use the personal quests and you can have up to eight players around the table and you're basically rocking around and, and you can put, there's loads of little mini expansions that we have in the, in the, uh, in the box sets um, that kind of add all sorts of like, um, bandit armies and skeleton armies and dwemer armies and all kinds all kinds of stuff that's going on and you can add in standing stones and and uh the daedric uh powers you know do you get any daedric influence all kinds of fun stuff but uh you can add all these extra 
uh, flavors to the game. And then basically, you just you just rock around, having adventures, going into dungeons, doing all the side quests, and that's it. You just focus on those. Um, and we've got like a big dragon encounter quest that takes you around the board, but it's not tied into the big uh, multi campaign. So you have multiple modes to play. Is what you're saying? You tell me multiple different ways to play. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. There's a there's the Dawn Guard expansion, which adds another whole campaign with another three chapters, and that adds in becoming vampires. Like, so is the interesting thing is, you know, like in in uh, in Dawn Guard, you, you know, at some point you rescued the. The vampire girl, I've forgotten her name. And the vampire you, princess, sort of the vampire royalty. Yeah, I forget her yeah, name. Yeah, you, you turn up at Dawn Guard, and they're like, "You've got a vampire with you." And like, yeah, yeah, she's my mate. Don't worry. And um, they're like, "Oh, okay." It's all <laughs> and, good, bro. She's a yeah. Fan. And then you go off, and you know, you go off to Castle Volcaha, and you, you're sent there. Um, so, in the same way, the players playing Dawn Guard, some of the players will, by their choices, become vampires, and their allegiance then becomes to Volkaha. Some of the players join the Dawn Guard and their allegiance is to Dawn Guard. And then you're vying for victory for your faction, but you're still working together as a team trying to defeat the monsters and, and the main plot. So it's this really cool kind of double layer to the game that you're trying, you know, you're getting cool vampire powers and, or you're getting cool uh, vampire hunting equipment and gear and uh but you're still trying to work together and defeat and defeat the enemies so there's this like interesting levels to the game as well and there's no player versus player mechanic right i can't attack no. another player okay yeah no no you can't you probably for the yeah. best yeah in dawn guard you you attack the vampires that are moving around the board and oh right. and we haven't got we haven't had uh roaming monsters actually so um uh let's see if it's um one of these is a roaming oh here we go yeah so this would move a vampire token towards the nearest stronghold if it reaches the great. So this would, because there's no um, uh, one, so this would place, uh, we'd have to place a vampire token on a wilderness space. Let's say we picked here because we're not up here. And then when that card comes up again, or a card that says move wandering monsters, it's going to move towards the nearest um, uh, stronghold. And if it gets there, it degrades it, which is basically adding a threat. And and yeah, and threat is the bad. We don't want threat. Threat is the yeah, totally. And and if, but you can go and defeat them, so you could move onto its space like a dungeon, and fight it. And they're usually pretty tough. Uh, and there's two versions, so you kind of flip it, um, and uh, randomly you don't know which one you're going to get. And and usually there's a pretty good reward. For, for killing them as well and in the in the uh we've got an upgrade set that replaces these all with kind of cool miniatures of course um so yeah there's lots lots of fun to be had we've got a um the from the ashes expansion adds this big plastic dragon that's moving around and you're having to defeat the dragon everywhere it turns up and uh it you know it's a it's you know like in what initially it's very powerful but it doesn't really do a lot of damage to you because it's flying around and as it get as you do more damage to it it's getting really angry and like it's like suddenly doing loads of damage to you so you've got to really tool up to take it on uh so we've got all these interesting expansions there's, there's a whole series of ghosts there's like 10 ghostly figures uh that are, are ghosts of heroes from the past who haunt you and they basically move around chasing you and you've got to deal with them that sounds awesome, Chris. So when when does this game when is this game set to release? It's out now. You can get oh, it in it's your out local right now. Games. Yeah, you can get it in your local gaming store. We shipped just before Christmas, and um, it hit retail I think uh, um, at Christmas in in America and um, in Europe, rest of the world, uh, kind of end of January. And um, you you should be able to get all the expansions I've been talking about. In retail as well you can get it from the modifius web store uh, along with some of the upgrades that we created there's a nice neoprene mat a kind of big mat of this there's like the gold septin coins we did and all the expansions including the um five to eight player box as well awesome man and then can they buy it online as well like directly i know you guys have a store and your website can yeah buy you can buy it from well? modifius.net which is europe and modifius.us which is us shipping and canada 
and when can and when are uh, more plans for DLC and expansions coming out? Uh, when are those hitting the shelves? Well, uh, we've got some cool ideas for more stuff, but um, with what's in the box, my, I mean, the base game alone, I reckon it's like two, three hundred hours of gameplay. Um, if <laughs> That's you, a lot of gameplay. Like, if you play like me and you just kind of want to get distracted and have fun, the the Dawn Guard campaign probably adds another hundred hours if you really want. The From the Ashes adds another whole layer of stuff that you can throw in to those existing games or the free roam mode. And then you've got the miniature upgrade set just adds cool plastics. Um, so there's bucket loads of gameplay. Um, I mean, I would be amazed if, you know, I I, I kind of don't expect to hear anyone for for weeks saying they're, they're bored. But saying that, uh, the community's already been creating content. There's someone who's done a Solheim expansion like a print and play one. Oh, like There's mods people... like mods for the oh yeah totally <laughs> it's like we've got the whole skyrim mod thing going on people because we we released all the cards templates so people can download and create their own mods for it which is brilliant and then and they are they're going and they look beautiful as well they've done an amazing job so i'll leave a link where they can purchase it from you guys in the description below and thanks so much chris for the demo i really appreciate it yeah no it's my pleasure like i said it's i don't get bored showing off the, the the same you know the same mission so even though that was a very kind of light touch version of it but <laughs>